around the corner of the IBF Junior Bantamweight Championship. The champion Barboa coming all the way from his home. That is in Guaymas, Sonora, Old Mexico. Goes up against the challenger from Cincelejo in Colombia. His name is Carlos Mercado. Mercado was one of those fighters that lost earlier to Quiroga. But he has rebounded himself and is fighting well and feels that he has another opportunity. And this time he's not going to let it get away. Up close and personal with the challenger. 26-year-old Carlos Mercado runs in the early morning silence of the Colombian Hills near his home in Cincelejo. His work is done on the same dirt roads that his father used as he carried bundles of food to market every day to support his family of 10. A fighter since the age of 11, Mercado dreams of a world title. I feel all right, I feel very well. This is my life's opportunity. I'm not going to lose it again. As Mercado trains with a championship goal in mind, he sometimes flashes back to his youth when friends and family were under continuous guerrilla gunfire in his hometown. Boxing was a way out of the streets for Mercado. He won more than 60 fights as an amateur, but seemed to improve more rapidly as a professional, winning 23 of his first 24 fights. After winning the IBF Inter-American title, Mercado got a shot at the same title he shoots for today. In 12 tough rounds, he lost to Texan Robert Quiroga in Italy, but was less than 100% for the fight in February of last year. Bueno, frente a Quiroga, tuve problemas de oh, cardio, no. no, against Quiroga, no I had uh, some problems with Carlos my Mercado. stomach, and I couldn't demonstrate, I couldn't show what was Carlos Mercado at all. Even with his impressive 24-2-1-1 record, Mercado knows that the clock is ticking on his chances to win a world championship. Fighting Barboa today is a challenge that he meets with respect. About uh, Barboa, I don't know that much. I only know that he won the fight against Quiroga, and that he's going to give me the opportunity uh, for this world title. Mercado and his camp have come here a little early to get themselves, as you can see, trains in the hills and the mountains around Colombia, but you have to get that altitude and get used to it, and they've come in a little early to do so here in Kalispell. So the challenger from Cincelejo in Colombia is ready, Carlos Mercado, and the crowd is ready for the approaching of the champion. Julio Cesar Barboa out of Guaymas, Sonora, Old Mexico, is truly one of the fine champions in the junior bantamweight division. Let's take a close look at the champion before he gets ready to fight. Boys, the defending IBF Junior Bantamweight Champion. But despite the same first and middle name, he fights and trains in the shadow of fellow Mexican champion Julio Cesar Chavez. His early pro career mirrored that of the famous Julio Cesar, as Barboa won his first 11 fights and 14 of his first 15 by knockouts. Now as the world champion, he feels he's gaining respect for his hard work. I think he... I believe that I have to do my work. I believe that I have to do my work. I believe that I have to do my work. I hope that the promoters will take that into recognition, and so does the fans that see the fight. Barboa knows true love from his family and fans in his hometown of Guaymas, Sonora, Old Mexico. They all shared in the joy of the world title after Barboa stopped Robert Quiroga in the 12th round of their title fight in San Antonio, Texas in January of this year. Barboa punished Quiroga, opening cuts over both eyes that finally stopped the fight. Barboa couldn't rest on his merit, however, as his first defense came against fellow countryman Joel Luna Zarate. It was in Mexico City in May. It was one of the most important victories for me, in, in being the fact that he was classified as the number one challenger. He was a tough, a good experience, a tough enemy, and with great experience. Gracias a la habilidad que, que tengo para boxear, pude salir adelante. Thanks to the ability that I have in, in boxing, I managed to come out ahead. Barboa has earned and retained his title as world champion by beating two very solid fighters. And now the next challenge is here, and Julio says he will be ready. Porque no tiene preparación, la hago siempre para salir. The preparation that I salir airoso, siempre ganar is aim towards coming, coming away victorious. I have a positive mentality. 
Well, Barboa, the man that will be in the ring as a champion, will come up against this young man, Carlos Mercado, as the challenger is making his way to the ring. And you know, Bob Spagnuolo, there's got to be a little apprehension in his thoughts because he fights the man that he lost an opportunity to win the title from, Robert Quiroga. And as far as Mercado is concerned, he comes away with the loss. And, of course, the champion Barboa comes away with a win. So he knows that he's got to get himself in a proper frame of mind, first of all, and secondly, must stay away from the punching power of Barboa this afternoon. He really does, Sam, but, it, you know, these fighters, they, they come in, everything is presented in a very positive manner. That's what your camp, the, the loss, the only blemish of his career, that's the last thing anybody discusses. It's the positive experience that he gained from the thing that's important to him. And those kind of positive thoughts are the things going through the mind of Mercado right now. So as Mercado waits the arrival of the champion, Julio Cesar Barboa gets ready to make his appearance here at this Raceway Park in Kalispell, Montana. And you can see an excellent crowd has filed into the stands here today. He's the number one contender is Carlos Mercado. Julio Cesar Barboa will be coming in shortly here. And here he comes with his ring walk coming in with the champion. And, of course, Mexican... Uh, National music being played in the background. And here comes the Mexican flag and the champion, Barboa. This crowd here in Kalispell, a little laid back, trying to see what these two youngsters can do as Junior Bantamweights coming in at 115 pounds, actually a half a pound less for Mercado as they have made their way into the ring here this afternoon in Kalispell, Montana. Barboa has had an opportunity to win over some big people, including Kiroga to win it, and Luna in a defense. Let's see how he does today. Let's meet him officially. Here's Ron Bruschi. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our main man of the afternoon. First gentleman, Boston, championship of the world. Which one is Red and green. series. Mercado two years older. You can see the height is almost identical. The weight the same. And that reach advantage by Mercado. That'll be something we'll find out if you'll be able to use today against the champion or not. The IBF rules that'll be governing this fight a little different from those of Montana. Ten point must system with the three judges scoring. No standing eight count. No three knockdown rule. Cannot be saved the bell in any round. And the cards will be used after the sixth round in the case of an accidental headbutt or foul. So those are some of the IBF rules. The crowd is ready. The boxers are ready. The, clear, the ring is being cleared. And now we are ready for our IBF Junior Bantamweight Championship of the World. Julio Cesar Barboa comes out of the red corner from across the way. And Carlos Mercado on the near side, the blue, as Colombia goes against Old Mexico. The referee again, Kevin McCarl, as both fighters 
Right now, they're trying to get some uh, extra Vaseline off the face of Mercado before this fight can get started as Mr. McFarl wants everything to be status quo and even at the start. Here we go. Schedule for 12 in Kalispell, Montana. Sam Smith along with Bob Spagnola. And again, how well Mercado is able to stay away from Barboa will be a key to this fight today. Yeah, he's got to try to establish a little something. He can't just wholesale run from this guy, Sam. He's got to get some respect here early in this fight, try to establish his jab. I notice both fighters come into the ring very dry. Uh, doesn't seem like either one of them have a good sweat on him. It's it's very dry up here at about 4,000 feet here in Kalispell, Montana. But Come on, Carlos, baby. You can see both fighters trying to establish something early. Mercado even standing toe-to-toe -to -toe here with the champion Barboa in the early first round. There's a good right hand thrown over the top by the champion Barboa. He again in the white trunks. In the black, that is Mercado. The champion Barboa is so apt at, at changing the speed of his punches. You'd think that, you know, quickness would be everything, but depending on the defensive uh, stance of your opponent you change sometimes you loop your punches sometimes you send send them straight down the pike and he's very apt at that changing the rhythm and the speed of his punches the champion Julio Cesar Barboa by the way in the fight against Quiroga for Mercado it was uh, one of those opportunities to get a championship that came in February of 92 he just absolutely did not feel well that day and of course Quiroga made him feel worse knocking him down twice in the first round and he went on to lose quite badly in that fight held over in Salerno, Italy. And now he gets another opportunity. Not many guys get this kind of opportunity, but... Hit. Oh, and he just got hit with a solid left hook. Right on the nose, and already his eyes starting to water up a little bit after that left hook by the champion. Where Boa looped that shot in there into the, the, the spot in the defense. He's also very good at pulling his head out when he gets right up on, to on top of the champion, pulling his head out and, and the opening where his head was scoring to that spot. Closing minutes, first round, scheduled for and 12. there's another looping hook, right? He's finding a home for that. And Mercado better do something to defense that. Pretty good upright, right uppercut that time by the challenger, backing Barboa to the ropes. He's very apt, as Bob pointed out, at adapting whatever style you want to fight him well. He can counter, he can take the offensive, and right now, another right hand has Mercado wobbling for a moment. Barboa certainly found his range here early in this fight. Barboa very poised, very much the champion that he is in the junior bantamweight division. He has to be poised because the man he won the fight from, Robert T. Rogo, won the fight to fight. He was a major, major win by Barboa. And he fought him in uh, Quiroga's hometown of San Antonio, which was even more. Adding credence to the win that he had, closing seconds of the first round. Mercado has done his best to try to take the fight to the champion. The champion again countering and taking control in the first round. First round, both fighters heading to their corners. Mercado just up to our left and across the way, Barboa. Both corners, of course, with a lot of uh, energy and a lot of experience out of both corners. And right now, Mercado even looking a little dejected as he comes to the corners. We look at him high above up on the left. He really does, Sam. You know, as I was saying before, fighters, you, everybody tries to accentuate completely on the positive, and he seems worked up. He has no place to spit his water. He's upset. He's dejected. His head is down, and they're using the ice on him at the end of the first round, which is generally something that they say for later and about. So he's not exactly having to go his way to start this. Well, you see, that's the challenger again, Marcano, while across the way, Barboa, he's been pretty well vacillated down as well. The referee may get some of that off of him before we get ready. As the seconds are out, and we're ready to go for round number two of this world championship fight from Big Sky Country in Montana, the USA. Both fighters come out to meet each other in the center of the ring. Round two of a scheduled 12 round with the champion in the white. Barboa goes right to work. Mercado. Not trying to move as much as we thought he might try to. He's going to try to stand and fight here early on. He better. He might have to change that, Sam. And you also notice Julio Cesar Barboa stayed on his corner, stayed on the stool right until the bell rang. Very calm in his corner over there. Mercado, on the other hand, got up and with 10 seconds to go in the rest period and started bouncing around in the ring. He, he seems uh, like that championship experience he had with uh, Robert Quiroga really didn't help him much. You see him trying to lunge for some punches. You start to see the movement also of Barboa. Yeah, he'll stand and fight with you. But he's also got good quick feet. He can lash out with a right-left combination about as quick as you can see Barboa. 
And that's what Marcano was finding out here in the second round. And the left hook to the side of the head that Barboa has found a spot with is already causing s swelling on Mercado's eye, and Mercado's aware of it. He's touched it several times. Fighter, you'll see him kind of pawing at to make sure there's no blood. Oh, yeah. it feels like could be a cut. And you can also see that they're having a clash of heads and early on. Any unintentional headbutt that would create a cut that might force the stoppage of a fight. If it happens inside six rounds and ruled by the referee as an accidental headbutt, it would be declared as a technical draw. After the sixth round, they go to the cards and the winner will be declared. Look at the quickness and the agility of the champion, Julio Cesar Barboa. I mean, he is like a doctor in the office. Man. This guy is brilliant performer. He's already starting. You, you can hear down here the sound of his heavy hands when he lands shots on the challenger, Mercado, and he's just, he's a consummate professional in there. Seems very confident at this stage of the fight, Sam. You can see Barry Poise backpedaling what he has to, but ready to lash out with a combination against Mercado with the top of the hat here. He just touches him, touches him with that jab, touches him, touches him, sets something up, and then he comes with everything on it. That's what I mean by changing the rhythm, changing the speed of his punches. There you see a three-punch combination. A couple to the body and one over the top of the head. Mercado leaning in for the punishment right now in round two. It's a great thing about this boxing business when you can see a young kid like Leo Cesar Barboa, see him at inception, see him as he comes up, breaks into some very tough fights with an Alfred Cote in Philadelphia, Robert Quiroga in San Antonio, Luna Zarate in Mexico City. I mean, he just, he spanked them all. And, you know, and we're watching this guy develop, Sam, honestly, into one of the great lower weight fighters, any weight fighters, but it's hard to get the credit for these little guys that they give the big fighters. By the way, that win over Cote vaulted him into that championship fight. The Quiroga people were not expecting Barboa. Of course, then they got their right shut out in the 12th round as Barboa won the title. Closing seconds of round two. Well, the champion again, another solid second round. Mercado again, just above us, appears to now have just a light abrasion on the outside. It is definitely a cut now, just outside the right eye. So the left hook is now found a home for it. It is the eye opposite the one you're looking at right now. And I do wish they find that spit bucket as uh, a Mercado is ejecting water right in our vicinity here. At least he's dropping it between us and the ring That's apron. Right. <laughs> now you see him working on the cut. That's a main concern of him right now. As the cut is being opened up, and you recall that Bob pointed out he was kind of pawing at that eye. As Barboa, very calm, very comfortable in his corner right now. Let's take a look at some of the action there in round number two. As again, Barboa team off here on Mercado. There's another solid punch for him. Right hand counter. Well, as Barboa, the champion, comes out to open the bell of round three. In control over the challenger, Mercado. Not in as much trouble as he was the first time he tried to win this title in Italy against Kiroga, but he's certainly finding that Barboa is looking at all of the weapons and using them all early on here through the first two rounds. You can see the champion Barboa in there as Mercado tries to shorten up the distance, keeps his forearms and his elbows inside in defensive posture here, and gets off some nice short punches. And it's not just the cut that uh, is a problem for Mercado, it's how it happened. It happened with those left hooks from the champion, and he hasn't done anything to defense that up to this stage of the fight, Sam. Mercado again has continued to try to come straight ahead to try to take away the attack of Barboa. And Barboa adjusting at almost every punch thrown, countering and scoring almost at will. He's continuously changing his angles that he punches from. Their heads came together there a little bit. It was beautiful boxing by the champion Julio Cesar Barboa. As he, it's a, it's a very uh, uh, tempered pace, he goes forward against Carlos Mercado here. He's not just going... Uh, aggressive regardless he's, he's going forward but he's picking his shot sometimes he lets Mercado come in a little bit he counters him nicely a beautiful thing to watch Barboa with 17 of his 19 victories by knockouts a great amateur as well in 120 wins he had 96 knockouts as an amateur so he does possess some accumulated power and he can knock you down with a one punch there's a good left hook he just glances off the jaw of Mercado Mercado starting to box a little bit now and moving those hooks to the side and to the kidneys. Barboa the rope and a body shot puts him down. 
Mercado almost rolling out of the ring. Carl McCall is over, and I don't think that so Mercado's going to continue. He's struggling to his feet. This fight's going to be over. A knockout in the third round as Barboa defends his title in Kalispell, Montana. Carlos Meyer Mercado took a vicious shot to the ribs, almost to see the air just escaping like a hole in a balloon. He crumpled to the floor, struggled at seven and eight to get to his feet, and Carl McCall counting him out for a knockout. Oh, yeah. the yeah. defending champion of the world, Julio Cesar Barboa, as they celebrate here in Big Sky Country as all of Mexico celebrates another victory. Barboa had been using over the head shots. Look how he got Mercado in trouble. And now he comes with a body shot to him, a hook to the body, and down he goes. It was another one of those left hooks. Let's pick it up from another angle. And he comes right inside with it. That drop, Mercado, you can see already trying to look for a place to go down. He's still hooking shots to the body. And he finally came inside, Mercado heading to the canvas and would not be able to get up. So as Carlos Mercado struggling to get up, all of Old Mexico celebrates with Julio Cesar Barboa in his second title defense. Well, as they take the tape off the hands of the champion Barboa, only 24 years of age. What a brilliant career he's got ahead of him, getting his 20th victory in only four defeats and his 18th win by a knockout as he has had himself an opportunity to do some great battling here. And Mercado, who came in hoping for the best but got the worst today, is put down with a knockdown and the knockout here right in the third round. Mercado, again, a man that we elected and thought might try to run a little bit and try to stop and fight occasionally but that was not the case he elected to come straight ahead on Barboa and when Barboa was able to adjust to whatever style you're throwing at him he adjusted extremely well through the combinations in three and four punch combinations and it paid dividends as Barboa gets the victory the second title defense he defeated Luna in Old Mexico that came in May and did it convincingly as he got a 12 round decision doesn't have to go that far today as he straps the belt back on for the IBF with a win today Ladies and gentlemen, at 1.58 of the third round, referee Kevin McCarl reaching the count of 10. The winner and still IBF middleweight champion of the world, Julio Cesar Barboa. Well, as we told you early on, this appreciative boxing crowd in Montana, again, very appreciative of what they've seen with Julio Cesar Barboa. And again, Carlos Mercado, the last man to go down. Bob Spagnola is there with the champion. I'm here with the grand champion, Julio Cesar Barboa, after his brilliant victory here, Sam, with his camp. I'm here with his manager and uh, his uh, matchmaker, Abdulio Munoz, his manager, Francisco Espinosa. I'm going to interview them because the champion's not bilingual, but I think you can tell from his expression that he's happy to be have won this fight. How do you feel, Francisco? I'm very happy, Bob, and uh, Julio, he has keeper. You're happy, you know, with the fight and everything. Sí, claro. Estoy muy contento de haber logrado mi segunda defensa y a prepararme para ir por la otra, por la tercera defensa. He's very uh, happy, but because I'm able to uh, to commit uh, uh, the second title defense, you know, and come out, you know, very uh, successful. And uh, I'm sorry about the first question, uh, Bob. You asked me, okay? I'm, I am. I'm very happy. Very happy, and I think we got a champion, you know, for, for a long time, Bob. Uh, he, he's a wonderful fighter. I was saying at ringside how he can change the rhythm of his punches and the speed of his punches, and he really seemed to have the challenger completely befuddled, even just in the first round of the fight. When you see a challenger, the number one contender, come in, and after the first round, he already has his head down from the punches that he's been hit with. He was he was demoralized from early in the fight. The Barboa just took it all away from him. Well, we know, Bob, you know, that, 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 that we got it, you know, the very first round. With a couple of punches from Borboa, I know the second round will be a uh, end up, okay? But uh, we went and uh, continued, you know, doing his work. I think, you know, Julio, you know, hit it uh, very hard uh, with uh, with uh, with the life. Yeah, he know. he did. He he turned the left hook to the body, and and I believe they're watching it on the monitor right now. Uh, it was almost a delayed reaction because uh, it took Mercado a second or two before he slumped to the canvas, grabbing his side. Uh, once again, I can't say enough about the champion, Julio Cesar Barboa. He's going to be champion a long time, and we're proud to have him here on the CKP Network. Back to you, Sam. Thank you very much. A good look at the champion, Julio Cesar Barboa.
His Mexican flag finally waving in the wind here over the beautiful big sky country of Montana as he gets a knockout win over Mercado. There's more to come. Okay, well, coming up, Rodriguez will fight Scotty Olson. They're quite high about Olson coming out of.